Hey, what's good my dudes, DeVayorn here, bringing you part 9 of our Arcane Spellcasting Guide series. In this video, we're going to be talking about every mage spell level 9, from top to bottom, start to finish, what they do, what they're good for, some fun tips and tricks, and whether or not you should be taking them in your Baldur's Gate runs. In this video, we're also going to be talking about Wild Magic and the three unique spells they get to their class kit. And we're going to be talking about that at the very end of this video. I originally planned to put those in the other videos as they are different levels, but I didn't want to talk about Wild Magic in three separate runs, or excuse me, videos. So we're going to do that all at once at the very end of this one. Now, just a couple caveats before we get started. I do play with three rules in mind. The first rule is no save, no reload. If the main character dies, it's game over and we start over from BG1. Number two, we play on insane difficulty, so everyone in the party takes double damage. And finally, we play with all SCS components installed, except for the ones that make the game easier. So enemies who have access to HLAs at the respective level will be using those. You'll be seeing Planetars, Comet, Dragon's Breath, etc. They also will be able to cast all their spells at the beginning of a fight to simulate pre-battle casting, and we will not be able to breach Liches or Rakshasa, or any of the other components that make the game easier. So, everything I say is going to be in regards to that particular set of rules, but 99% of what I say will also apply to your core rules on modded runs as well. Additionally, we are using the Enhanced Edition, although for level 9, there really are very, very few differences between the original Baldur's Gate 2 and the EE, and I'll be talking about those differences as we, as we come across them to the best of my ability. Now finally, before we get started, we have a tier list set up here. S tier spells are at the very top. These spells are awesome. Take them and use them all the time. A tier spells are spells that are situationally really good, or for the most part, pretty good. B tier spells are spells that are okay, situationally good. C tier spells are spells that you really shouldn't be using unless you have nothing better. And then RP tier spells at the very bottom are the joke tier spells. These spells you really should never use unless you're actively roleplaying. So we're going to start at the top, go through all the S tier spells, and work our way down alphabetically. So, first tier spell on our list in the S tier series is Chain Contingency. This is an evocation spell, so enchanters will be denied this awesome spell. However, depending on the mods and a version you're running, uh, every class, every excuse me, every subkit of mage will have access to contingencies and sequencers. So that does depend on what uh, mods and whatnot you have installed. In my game, for example, every wizard will have access to this. It has a long cast time of 9, so this is typically not something you want to use in combat, although you can, and we'll talk about why in just a second. So, very similar to the way Contingency and Sequencers work, this will allow you to insert 3 spells into your Contingency that will unleash immediately upon activating a certain condition. Typically, the conditions are a little bit more expanded for Chain Contingency when you compare it to the others, in the sense that the original Contingency is typically like if you're helpless, uh under 50% HP or get hit, Chain Contingency gives you the option to have them launch upon seeing an enemy, which is very, very special, considering you can also plug in here a variety of offensive spell casts. Really though, the sky's the limit with this spell. You can use up to three spells of level 8 and lower of both Arcane and Divine casting. So if you're a Cleric Mage, you can put Cleric spells in here and Really, it's just, the sky's the limit of this spell. You can do so many things. You can use this defensively to give yourself, um, say, a mislead, a greater restoration, and an improved taste to where, like, say, you get dispelled and you get hit. You can have that go off, and all of a sudden you're completely safe and about to tear apart your enemies. You can also use this purely offensively, which is what I typically like to do, by socketing three horrid wiltings or three incendiary clouds. If you're doing that on multiple mages and have them all go off at the same time, the entire screen is going to disappear in seconds. You can use this to literally one shot certain bosses i have done this in the past where i would put three horde wiltings into contingency and irenicus would die instantly even in hell half of his demons going down with him this spell is really really insanely powerful i would typically recommend using this offensively not defensively i think there are better options spell trigger works damn fine if you're trying to give yourself some defensive options as an oh shit button you can activate your trigger but the cool thing about contingency is it will go off automatically which means you don't have to use your turn for the round. So, for example, if I activate a spell trigger, I can't cast a fireball after that. However, if my chain contingency is activated by seeing somebody, I can then cast another horde wilting on top of that if I want to, making it four. You can combine this during a time stop and improved alacrity to cast another five horrid wiltings. And like I said, the entire screen is just going to be a fog of white horrid wilting. You really can't see anything. And when the fog and smoke clears, there's just going to be a ton of dead bodies all over the place. This spell is really incredible. Can't say enough good things about it. If you have a level nine, if you have a mage in your party that has access to level nine spells, this is definitely one you want to take on every single rest. It's that good. 
Like I said, you can't say enough good things about it. When it comes to all the cool things you can do, the sky's the limit. You can really customize this any way you want. And this is really one of the best spells in the game. If this was going into a top 10 um, spells, I would probably put this at maybe 3 or 4. It is really, really that good. Alright, up next is going to be Imprisonment. Imprisonment is an abjuration spell, so transmuters cannot use it. This is a range of touch, by the way, so you have to get into melee. Very long cast time at 9, so something you typically don't want to use in combat, although you can. When you cast this spell, the target, after a certain delay of usually about 3 seconds, you'll see this magical cage appear, and it will place the target inside and under the earth. You will get XP for this, and that target will be gone forever. The only way of returning them to the surface world or whatever is going to be using the freedom spell. This spell is incredible. And the reason this spell is incredible is because it goes through Amar. Which means if you have a fallen planetar on top of you, or you have a beholder who's just going absolutely ape shit, obliterating your defenses, you can walk up to it and imprison it, and it's gone forever. And like I said, you don't get any of the items because it's gone, it's literally between the, beneath the earth, but you do get XP for it. And you can basically use this as to either take out something that's causing you problems, like I said, a very powerful Beholder or a Planetar or something, or you can just use it on enemies to just get rid of them. I typically don't use this unless I actually have a time stop up, just because it's so dangerous for a mage to walk into melee and try to imprison something. Planetars can dispel on hit, so unless you have protection for magical weapons up, it's dangerous. But a Beholder especially, because of the way their anti-magic dispel ray works, it's really dangerous to put a, a mage right in front of them. Because they'll almost certainly focus it and hit it with a dispel ray, which then silences you, and then you'd basically just end up getting your mage killed. So I really like using this during a time stop, however you can use it outside of it. And it's not just Beholders and Planetars, you can use this on literally anything. You could use it on demons, you could use it on... you can't use it on bosses. But you can use it on very powerful demons, you can use it on fighters that are going ape shit. you can use it on pretty much everything except the ball spawn, and then the final bosses obviously of Irenicus and Amelison. So if there's, uh, you're fighting the Huntress for example, who's just decimating your party, or you're fighting uh, a drow who for some dumb reason you just cannot seem to hit or lock down, you can just walk up to an imprisonment which in a sense is basically instantly killing it. Although, like I said, you can't get the items unless you actually cast a freedom spell and then literally kill them afterwards. But this spell is really, truly incredible. You can use it in so many different ways. This is a spell that I always take multiple of, especially late game. Um, just because there are so many nasty beholders, there are so many nasty enemies that you will be encountering and throwing a ball. And of course, it's always great in a pinch to get rid of a planetar or something like that. I really can't say enough good things about this spell. Definitely recommend taking a couple of these. Definitely use them liberally because they will help you out big time when you're starting to get into some of those massive, massive fights where Amelisan and Demogorg and all the others are just summoning a ton of fucking enemies for you to fight. This will help even the odds very, very quickly. Can't say enough good things about it. Definitely take this shit. Up next we have Spell Strike. This is the big boss of the anti-magic abjuration spells. So, transmuters cannot use this, so it will target one enemy, a decent cast time of 5, so about 3 seconds for it to go off, and it will target one creature and obliterate every single one of the spells we have listed here. Turning, invulnerability, immunity, uh, spell deflection, spell turning, spell shield, and spell trap. Of course, it will go through MR, and unlike Secret Word, Ruby Ray, Pierce Magic with the others, this will get rid of all of these at once. Now, you do have to be careful. If they do have a spell shield up, this will get absorbed. It will be absorbed, it will be gone, and it will do absolutely nothing for you. So you do want to make sure you hit your enemy with a Ruby Ray first to get rid of the Spell Trap. And if they have a Deflection or Turning Up, you may need to use more than one Ruby Ray to make sure that Spell Shield is gone. After that Spell Shield is gone, you hit him with Spell Strike, and then you hit him with Breach, and they're completely butt naked. You just literally took away every single Mage spell they have on. So Spell Strike is a spell that you always want to take a couple of on your Mages. I like to actually combo this with a time stop. Time stop honestly just makes everything better. But what I like to do if you're fighting, for example, a powerful lich or a mage, you can time stop. And if you can see him through the invisibility, which you disarmed or got rid of with a detect invis or a thief using fine traps, you can walk up to the mage during the time stop, hit him with a couple ruby rays, back up, another ruby ray, back up another ruby ray, so you hit him with three now, and then back up again and hit him with spell strike. Each of the ruby rays will go off as soon as the time stop ends, and then the spell strike will go last. And all of a sudden, he's going to be completely naked spell protection-wise. And that's when you hit him with the breach, and then he's done. Good to go. 
So this is a spell you're really going to use a lot of in SCS. If you're playing core rolls with no mods, really don't need this spell so much. Enemies won't be using too many of these, if at all. Honestly, it's been a long time since I played the original game, but I do know that spell immunity and in spell trap and spell shield and spell turning, you don't really see all those going to mage very often, if ever. So this is definitely something you're really going to use a lot of with SCS. If you're not playing with SCS, don't really need this too much, but... If you are playing with SES, you really want to use this spell. It's really, really, really good. Alright, up to the next spell. This is one of the best spells in the game. Some people like to say it is the best spell in the game. This is Time Stop. Alteration spell, so abjurers cannot use it. It has a cast time of 9, so a fairly decent uh, time. And when this spell is cast, no enemy will be able to move. No one will be able to take any action. All projectiles and attacks are halted mid-air for 3 rounds. The only one who is capable of moving is the mage who cast this spell. They're allowed to move wherever they want, attack whoever they want, and cast whatever they want. However, almost every cast spell you cast will be frozen in the time stop until the time stop ends. For example, if I cast the time stop and I throw a horde wilting, a fireball, a skull trap during the time stop, none of that will go off until the time stop ends. However, you can use this in all sorts of ways. Like I said before, with Spell Strike, you can use this to obliterate a mage's defense. You can use this to walk up and imprison an enemy who can't even fight back. You can also attack enemies during a time stop. And when you're attacking during a time stop because the enemy can't move because time is frozen, every attack lands. If you're a fighter mage or a thief mage, you can use this to just literally obliterate every enemy around you. I typically have improved taste on my fighter mages at all times, thief mages as well. So when they do cast a time stop, they get all those extra attacks per round. And like I said, every attack lands, so you just turn the entire screen into a bloody mess. This spell is insanely useful. You can also combo this with things like Karsamir or Staff of the Magi. Walk up to somebody, hit them with those weapons, which will instantly dispel every single protection or buff they have on, assuming they're not immune to magical weapons. And if you're playing in the base game, where enemies like to use Mantle, Improved Mantle, ab Absolute Immunity, you can actually hit through those using Karsamir plus 6. For example, if you're playing Yawn or Hate Elise using a Time Stop uh, Trap, the spell is absurdly overpowered. Well, I don't know if it's overpowered, but it really... Yeah, no, I take it back. It's definitely overpowered. This spell is insanely strong. Enemies will use this too. Mostly to... Um, enemy mages will use this to just get a, a ton of spells off. But you have to be really careful of fighter mages using this. Um, people like Amelison, Ilisara, Demogorgon will cast a time stop and then just start attacking your party. And again, on insane difficulty, the damage they put out is truly insane. And it's a great way for everyone in your party to just get splattered really quickly. So you got to be careful of that. It's one of the reasons that I always recommend taking protection from magical weapons on every one of your mages in SCS, just because enemies like to use this spell all the damn time, too. Like, kind of like Chain Contingency, really the sky's the limit with this spell. You can really do anything. If I'm using this on Edwin, I'll typically have him run around, attacking people with Staff of the Magi to dispel their buffs, and then weaving spells in between that. Um, so for example, walk up and smack a guy, cast a Horde Wilting. Walk up and smack another guy, cast a Horde Wilting. All of a sudden... The time stop goes off, they're both dispelled, and the Horde Wilting comes down and obliterates them. You can also combo this with Improved Alacrity to drop Horde Wilting after Horde Wilting after Horde Wilting, or just obliterate someone's spell defenses, or launch like 500 magic missiles, which will all go off when the time stop ends. There's so many fun things you can do with this spell. It's really, really insanely strong. This is the number one spell you take at level 9, in my opinion. Whether you're a mage, sorcerer, fighter mage, thief mage, cleric mage, any sort of mage... This is the spell you're going to take all the damn time, because it's that good. This is, like I said, arguably the best spell in the game. So, can't say enough good things about Time Stop. Let's get on to the spell that's going to take a hot minute to talk about here. Wish. So, Wish is part of any school, which means, of course, any wizard can cast it. This is an interesting spell. It has a cast time of 5, so not super quick, but if you are wearing a Robo Vecna and Amulet of Power, this spell is basically instant. And kind of like Limited Wish, you're going to summon up a genie who will have, I believe with Wish, there's 36, 37, or 38 possible different outcomes depending on your wisdom. I'm not going to talk about every single one of them, because half of them are things you never want to ever, ever choose. And we'll give you a list of things. But uh, let me go talk about that actually first before we get started on the wishes themselves. You'll get five wishes, depending on your wisdom. It's going to be RNG. Sometimes you get all the good wishes. Sometimes you get some of the bad wishes. Sometimes you get the absolutely shitty wishes. I wouldn't recommend using this spell if you have less than 18 wisdom. 
18 wisdom is required for some of the best wishes you can get and will also completely remove some of the absolutely horrendously bad wishes that you never ever want to have cast not all of them but some of them if you don't have 18 wisdom i really wouldn't recommend casting this spell however there are a lot of potions of insight in the game which will boost your wisdom to 18 in which case this is suddenly viable you can also um yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. I'll talk about that. I'll, I'll save that for Breakfast Dream. We're just going to talk about this with Wild Magic, but we'll talk about that later. So I'm going to talk about a couple of the wishes here that you really want to watch out for that are insanely helpful. First wish is Breach All. I wish for my enemy's magical defenses to be utterly destroyed is what your character says. And um, this is also what you'll see um, enemy spellcasters say. If you see uh, a Lich saying that, or like a Kangax will use the spell, um, I believe a Melisande will wish, and there's a couple other people in the game who will use this spell. And if you see that, you want to be ready, because this is an unblockable breach. This is a spell that will go through Spell Shield, and this is a spell that will obliterate all your good defenses. Stone Skin, um, Improved Invis, all, all those really useful abilities that will keep your mages alive are suddenly fucking gone. And this is something that's really useful, because this is the only way you can actually get rid of a Lich's defenses normally. Liches are immune to breach. And there is absolutely nothing you can do aside from a remove magic after getting rid of their spell immunity to get rid of that shit. But with this spell, you can go right through that. Same goes for the Rakshasa. If you're fighting a Renicus or a Melisan or a Demi Lich or some other enemy which would normally require an inordinate amount, an excuse me, I cannot talk this morning, an inordinate amount of work to get through their spell defenses, you can actually obliterate them instantly with this spell. And not only does it hit them, it hits all your enemies. Now there is a spell, no, excuse me, there is a wish that actually will breach everyone, you included, but you don't want to do that because if your wizards lose their protection for magical weapons, stone skin, etc., they're going to die in two seconds, and it's really hard to recover from that. But the breach all wish all enemies is extremely powerful. This is one of my favorites, this is the one I use all the fucking time, and if you're ever fighting a lich or a wizard, this is one you definitely want to use and take. Uh, up next is the Intoxicate All Wish. This is a weird one. Basically what ends up happening is every single person on screen, enemies, party members, neutral people, will all become heavily intoxicated, incurring a minus 10 luck penalty. I've heard people say it's minus 15. I've heard people say it's minus 12. I'm fairly certain it's minus 10, but I'm not 100% on that. I have actually not tested that myself to see if I could see the exact luck penalty. But basically what it means is when you cast this spell, everyone is going to be getting a massive penalty to all their rolls, which is really, really, really helpful. When it comes to, basically, every time you cast a spell on somebody with this penalty, your spell is going to be doing max damage. Your attacks are going to be doing max damage. Um, I don't believe it actually affects enemy Thacko. I don't believe that's how luck works. But um, this spell is insanely useful. Basically, if you get this wish off, against this is a, this is a wish where it's like if you didn't get the best wishes this is the next best next best thing because after casting this you can cast a mass cure on a cleric and this will obliterate it from your own party i believe you can also block it with spell immunity but obviously that's not going to apply to everyone in your party because not everyone in your party is going to be a wizard who has spell immunity ready just in the off chance that you get this wish but mass cure does work and so you basically remove the massive penalty of intoxication from your party and it stays on the enemy and if you're fighting a massive group of enemies that's pretty damn fucking helpful like i said a couple horde weltings after you cast this and they're all dead in seconds even drow are going to be taking tons of damage from that shit so that's a pretty good one uh, another one is improved taste on the full party that's one that i'll usually take again if i don't have the good wishes very handy to have i believe the improved taste is a 20 round improved haste which is two turns so it lasts a good two minutes very nice there's a Restore All, which will cast Greater Restoration on your entire party. So that's going to heal them up to full, in addition to removing any level drain effects or, or other um, blinds, disease, etc. on them. Super nice. There's a Res All, when the only reason I have that included... Typically, you don't want to resurrect dead party members, but you can use this to heal party members, just like the Druid and Cleric HLA, which I use all the time as kind of like a mass powerful heal. And another one that's really, really strong that you use all the time is going to be um, the rest. Not only does rest restore every spell you have, it will heal you, and it will also restore any charged items you have as well. So if you have Staff of the Magi and use it the Spell Trap, you can use it again. If you have Valor's Helm, the Simulacrum, you can use it again, etc, etc. That spell is insanely powerful, and one of the reasons Wish is so damn good is because you can use your level 9 spells, use your HLAs, summon a Planetar, 
drop your chain contingency horde wiltings barrage wish get that wish again this is purely rng and all of a sudden you're able to do all of it all over again this is a spell that i use on a melison all the time i think it's really really handy but it is rng every single one of these is rng there's literally 37 possibilities 36 35 there's a little under 40 possibilities you can get with this spell and so every time you're using it it's a roll of the dice but if you get the really good wishes it's it's beyond a game changer it is beyond game changing it's beyond broken it really really makes all the difference in the world and i don't like rng in the sense that rng is not fair or balanced but rng is extremely fun and that's one of the reasons i like this spell so much but the rest wish is definitely arguably the best and then there's two more i wanted to talk about uh let's see where is it Oh, uh, another wish that uh, liches, enemy liches in a Melisande will use sometimes is the, uh, they'll say, I wish for time itself to become my servant. This is a double duration, improved alacrity, time stop wish. So basically, for four rounds, they get improved alacrity to just beat the shit out of you, launch every spell from their spell book, and then I believe it's eight rounds, although it might be longer, of a time stop to just absolutely destroy you. Yeah, the spell is absolutely insane. You could, If you get this spell... If you, excuse me, if you get this wish and have Rope of Vecna or Amulet of Power on, you can basically unleash your entire spellbook in this one spell. It actually lasts that long. And you could use another Improved Alacrity and then just chain it with another Time Stop. There's just so many ways you can combo this to where you're just... All the enemies are literally at your mercy for over an entire turn. Over 60 seconds of you just chain chucking spells, chain swinging your sword, etc. And it's just... I, it's just insane. It's insane. I mean, I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's beyond busted. It's beyond fucking busted. Just how strong this shit is. It's absolutely insane. And like I said, this is a very RNG spell. You'll sometimes get the really good wishes, and you'll sometimes get them back to back. And sometimes you'll get the really shit wishes, and this is going to cost you the game. I have had characters die because I put all my level 9 spell slots as wish, I rolled the dice, and every single time, I lost. And eventually, it ended up killing us. Uh, Charles Bronson was one of my runs. He died because he used, I think, five wishes on Sendai. And every single one of them, either A, uh, were just shit wishes, or B, didn't go off. That's another thing that you'll see happen sometimes. If you're chain wishing, sometimes the wish won't actually take effect. I have no idea why that is. I don't know what causes that bug, but that is something to keep in mind. If you're a big fan of this spell, like I am, you gotta be ready for that. I think it has something to do with summoning multiple Jin at once. And the Jinn are only able to do one wish at a time. I don't know. But that is something to watch out for. You can also use this uh, with a simulacrum or project image. You can give them the scroll of wish, summon them, and have them use that. I don't use that in my game. I think it's actually uh, restricted through one of my mods. So simulacrums and project images cannot use items. But I am fairly confident that um, the latest version of uh, Baldur's Gate that Beamdog put out, you can do that. So that's something to keep in mind. Having a project image or a simulacrum use a wish is pretty damn fucking strong because a simulacrum and project image are level 7 and 8 spells. And like I said, it's just... If you get the good wishes, it's basically game over no matter who you're fighting. That being said, just like uh, for time stop, which I actually kind of forgot to say, some bosses are immune to this. The time stop wish at least. Uh, Demogorgon, Amelisan, Balthazar, and uh, Avazagal. Those four are all completely immune to time stop. They're immune to the wish time stop as well, so do be careful with that, otherwise you might end up, uh, this might end up backfiring and screwing you over pretty hard. That being said, this spell is really the most double-edged of double-edged swords in this game. This spell will either win you the game single-handedly, or excuse me, win you the fight single-handedly, or it will cost you the game. So you gotta be, gotta be ready for that shit. You gotta be ready for this to fail, or you gotta be ready for it to do absolutely fucking nothing, or heaven forbid, if you're using this with lower wisdom, Every single wish might do something devastatingly bad to your party. I know there's a silence all, um, silences your whole party. I know there's one that slows your whole fucking party. There's one, there's one that will reduce your main stats to three, which can be devastating. There's all sorts of horrible things that can happen with this spell. That being said, I personally love it. I think RNG is fun as fuck. And when you get the really, really, really good wishes, it's game-changingly strong and extremely fun. I personally like this spell. And I'm going to leave it at S tier because of that. 
And that'll be it for our S tier spells. Up next is our A tier spells. So let's move on to Spell Trap, which is the only A tier spell we have. It's an Abjuration spell, so transmuters can't use it. It lasts 18 rounds with a fairly long cast time of 9. So this is something you really want to use before a fight. And this is basically Spell Deflection, but better. This will provide up to 30 levels of protection and absorb any spell cast at you that's not an Abjuration Anti-Magic effect. So... For example, if you get hit by a Flame Arrow, which is a level 3 spell, you'll get one spell up to level 3 back. In addition of that Flame Arrow being completely blocked, and now you have 27 levels of protection left. This will block any spell, like I said, that's not an anti-magic one, like Ruby Ray, Spell Strike. This will block a Breach and absorb a Breach, because a Breach is not high enough to take this spell down. Um... You can use this for all sorts of things. You can use this just to keep your wizards safe, to protect them from magic, although typically if you're playing with SCS, enemies will not be chucking spells at somebody having spell trap on. Um, there's also the old power word kill combo, which you can use, for example, what you do is you cast spell trap on your um, mage, summon a uh, project image with a ton of um, power word kills memorized, and the project image will hit your mage with power word kill. And... Because the Powered Kill is a level 9 spell, you'll get a level 9 spell back every time you get hit by it. And you can kind of use this to regenerate your spell book, assuming you're willing to take a couple Powered Kills. You can use this with Fingers of Death and a couple other fun abilities. Um, this thing is, the Staff of the Magi, which chances are you'll have done the Twisted Rune and you have this Staff. Staff of the Magi lasts for 8 hours. That is insanely long. 18 rounds, on the other hand, really isn't. Two turns is about going to be about as long as your improved taste, your spell immunities, etc. At this point in the game, because typically those spells stack at uh, cap at 20. So this doesn't really last all that long. And it is a level 9 spell slot, which are extremely, extremely valuable. As you saw from the other S tier spells we have over here. That being said, I typically will take one of these on my main character, assuming I'm not using Staff of the Mage. I usually give that to Edwin. Edwin's core in my runs. I take him all the time. But this spell is still fairly handy. And if you are using it in combo with Power Word Kill to get your spells back, then this spell kind of becomes an S tier spell. That being said, I don't like to use that. I feel that's kind of weird and cheesy, to be honest. But that is something you can do. And you can combo that with all sorts of other spells and abilities to make that work. And in general, this spell is just a really great thing to have. This will help you out big time when you're fighting enemy wizards, in the sense that it will absorb one of the next very next spell they draw, uh, launch, like a flame arrow. I don't believe this actually... Uh, I don't believe this will protect you from Ruby Ray or Kelvin's Wording Whip. I believe it will get absorbed in the very first hit of it. So you do want to make sure you have spell uh, shield up with your spell trap to make sure it stays safe. And as long as you do that, this spell will keep your mage's faces nice and pretty from magic in general um that being said like i said definitely an a tier spell not s tier unless you're using that uh, weird cheesy combo but still very handy to have i would recommend having this on your mages for pretty much every fight but assuming you're obviously fighting other mages otherwise then it doesn't do anything at all all right up next are the b tier spells first b tier spell is black bladed disaster this is an evocation spell so enchanters can't use it it lasts for 18 rounds exact same as spell trap decent cast time before and it will create a weapon that does 2 to 24 damage every swing. I think it's actually 2d12, which is, of course, 2 to 24. Um, it's a plus 5 weapon, so it'll hit through pretty much everything, um, except absolute immunity, and if you're using the mods, improved immunity, improved mantle. It hits extremely hard. In addition, there's a 10% chance that every hit will... Um, every time you hit an enemy, the sword will drain 4 levels and heal you for 20 hit points, which is fairly useful. The level drain, not really all that useful, but the 20 HP... Fairly useful. Also, every time you hit somebody, you have to save it plus four or be disintegrated. This spell is actually pretty damn great for a fighter mage and for a thief mage. If you're a wizard, a pure mage, this spell is pretty much shit because your Thacko is going to be horrendous. And I don't recommend using um, uh, Tensor's Transformation. I think that spell blows for everything except for Shape Change, which we'll talk about in a bit. But if you are a fighter mage, this spell is actually pretty damn good. You hit really, really, really hard with this sword. Um, again, the effect of disintegrating, there's always, uh, you always gotta be careful of that because you might be hitting somebody who has gear you want and disintegrating them means the gear is gone forever. Um, it's also possible that, um, this bugs out your items. I haven't had this happen a lot, 
But there are times where I use this spell and I'm unable to re-equip my items unless I reload, but that's really not a big deal, honestly. Um, you do get the effect of your offhand while using this spell. Um, so if you have Belm in your offhand, you can use that to basically have 10 attacks per round with this thing. Uh, you can use this in combination with um, Stealth to backstab for absolutely insane numbers. Hitting up to 24 damage and then adding on Strength and Grand Mastery bonus is really, really, really insane. I think, honestly, the only thing that hits harder than this in the game is the shape change um, when it comes to backstabs. Um, so this is really, really good. This is a really, really good spell. I think it's fairly underrated. I typically don't use it in my runs just because I kind of need the gold in SOA. And in TOB, it's great, but again, this is a level 9 spell. And in my games, I would rather be using Chain Contingency or Time Stop, or Wish than Black Blade of Disaster. That being said, it's a really strong spell, definitely a fun spell to play with for sure, but I'm going to go ahead and leave this at B tier, just because there are better spells that you can get at level 9 in the spell book. If this was a level 8 spell, I would probably make this S plus tier, and the spell would be insane, but the fact that it's competing with those others, I think this has to stay B tier. Um... Yeah, basically that's, that's really all there is to say about it. Definitely a really good spell, definitely a fun spell, it's just there are better stuff in this tier is all. Up next is Freedom. Freedom is an abjuration spell, so transmuters can't use this. This is the counter to Imprison. Fairly long cast time of 9, and this will release everything that's been imprisoned. So not only will it release people who have been hit by Trap the Soul, hit by Imprisonment, it will release all of them. So if you imprisoned a Planetar, and then Kangax imprisoned Edwin, and imprisoned Imowen, whoever's in your party, if you cast Freedom, Edwin will come back, Imowen will come back, and the Planetar you imprisoned will come back too. So you have to be ready for that. If you're using this mid-fight, expect everything you imprisoned to come back with it. I typically only use this long after a fight is over, or if I know there's no other enemies in prison, because loosing a planetar is particularly dangerous, or a beholder, or whatever have you. This will also work for everything on the entire map. So if you imprison the beholder way over here, and you're fighting someone else way over here, and you cast freedom, that beholder is now free. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, why is this B tier? Well, because if somebody gets imprisoned, you need this spell. But it's not something you really should ever have memorized unless you're about to go into a confrontation where you know you need to cast freedom. Or if you know, obviously, a fight's over and you're going to freedom your imprisoned uh, companions. So really nothing really interesting to say about this spell. It's just, you know, it freedoms things. Uh, I believe it works on maze as well. I don't know if it says that here. Yeah. It will also work on people who have been mazed. Um, and that's pretty much it. Great. Thanks a lot, Freedom. Definitely a spell you have to have just in case, but not a spell you should be memorizing. But it's still, like I said, because it does have its uses, we're leaving it at B tier. Up next, Powered Kill, Conjuration Summoning Spell, so Diviners cannot use it. What's cool about this spell is it has an insanely quick cast time of 1. So if there is an enemy that you somehow manage to get low, who then gets up a spell protection or something um, that will basically stop you from hitting it, for example, if you get an enemy low and he gets up a protection for magical weapons or something, and you're able to kill it with powered kill, that's cool. But like I said, the most use you get out of this spell is really combining it with spell trap. Uh, being able to spam this spell on somebody who has a spell trap up will give them all their spells back very, very quickly. And for that reason, I'm going to leave this at B tier. I think, honestly, this spell kind of sucks, um, even though there is no saving throw. In my game and my mods, because enemies have max HP, there's really no time you ever use this. Even... I can't think of a single enemy in the game that has 60 hit points or less, unless it's something that's literally about to die. Demogorgon has 800 hit points in my game. Amelson is usually sitting on about 500, I believe, maybe even higher. Um, this doesn't work on bosses anyways. Um, most beholders are going to be immune to this garbage anyways, because it does get blocked by MR. Um, drow, same way. I'm just trying to think of times where you'd really use this ever on an enemy. And I just cannot think of a time where I'd use a level 9 spell to target one enemy and kill them instantly if they have under 60 hit points. With the exception of, like I said, if somehow you breach a mage and you manage to get a couple auto attacks off him, or you attack a mage who's not prepared, who doesn't have his SES protections up yet, and you get him low, and then you hit him with this and you kill him real quick before the fight starts, but that's just, I don't know, that's a little fucking cheesy to me, but you do you, my friends. If that's what you want to do, then fucking do it. I'm going to leave this at B tier just because of the spell trap combo, otherwise I would put this at C tier for sure. I don't use this spell ever, I think. 
Unless you have absolutely nothing else here, combing with a spell trap, I wouldn't recommend. Up next is Shape Change. Shape Change is an interesting spell. This is Polymorph Self on steroids, I like to say. Alteration spell, so abjurers uh, will not have access to it. It actually has a fairly decent duration of one hour, which is about five minutes of real time. Long cast time of nine, and you will have access to a variety of new forms. And I wrote down the most important ones on the back of my paper here. You're able to turn into a Mind Flayer, Iron Golem, Greater Wolfware, Earth Elemental, Fire Elemental, or Giant Troll. These three right here are hot garbage. The Earth Elemental has slightly decent strength, um, but very low dex. Fire Elemental, low dex. Giant Troll, I think, has low dex, although I'm not sure. Um, they have some minor resistances. Fire Elemental, obviously, is immune to fire. Uh, Giant Troll has a minor, tiny bit of regeneration, but these are really hot garbage. There's really no time you'd ever want to be using this. Don't forget you can't cast while in Shape Change forms. So there's really no reason to ever use this shit. Uh, Greater Wolfware is almost decent, but it's missing its magic resistance. Unless you're playing with mods that restore, restore the magic resistance to the Greater Wolfware, all you're getting out of it is 50% elemental resistance and regeneration. And the regeneration is nice. If you have haste up, you actually regenerate quite a bit of HP. I believe it also boosts your strength to 20 and dex to 19, which isn't bad. But again, because if you're a pure mage, you don't have good Thacko to begin with, and boosting your strength to 20 is insufficient for you to actually deal damage with this thing. Um, that being said, if you're taking a lot of damage, uh, you can use this to basically regenerate yourself, which is kind of nice, I guess, but I really don't think that's worth it for a level 9 spell, to be honest. I mean, level 7 regeneration from the Divine uh, Casting Tree will do the same thing, but way, way better. I just, I don't know why you'd ever really use that, to be honest. So the two that actually are worth mentioning are Mind Flayer and Iron Golem. We'll talk about Iron Golem first. Iron Golem will boost you to 24 strength, I believe. 23, 24, 25. I don't think it's 25. Um, which will give you a nice boost to Thacko and damage. Its main hand attack does a massive amount of damage. I believe it's 4 to 40. Um, which then will also um, get benefit from the strength on top of that. I believe this is the hardest hitting attack in the game. I believe a thief using this to backstab with Kai w will actually be the hardest hitting attack in the entire game. And for that reason, it's kind of cool. You can basically use this to one shot anything that's not immune to backstab. If you're obviously a thief mage, you can use this to backstab and one shot anything in the game. Obviously, a lot of enemies are immune to backstab, and TOB especially. Beholders, golems, most bosses. So the. The usefulness of this is not really there, but it is really, really fucking fun to get insane backstabs with this. I've gotten backstabs for over 400 using this spell. And it's really cool to just walk up to something as a giant fucking golem, smash my fist down, and just see something splatter all over my screen. It's hilarious to me. Absolutely hilarious. But is it good? Not fucking really. So the only one that's also worth mentioning is the mind oh i'm sorry i should talk about the resistances iron golem does get all the resistances they are completely immune to magic and the elements at 100 this can still be lowered through a spell trigger lower resist keep that in mind and you also get 20 percent physical damage reduction so what but again like i said while you're in this form you can't cast spells and you don't get a boost to ac in fact you'll typically get a penalty compared to what you normally have most wizards are going to be sitting on 18 decks or um well, not companion-wise, but if your main character is a wizard, you probably made yourself with 18 decks. This will reduce you to 9, so you're going to get a penalty to that, which means enemies are going to hit you more frequently, especially in TOB, where enemy Thacko is basically capped. Um, so if you have a protection from magical weapons on, that's great, but if all you have is a stone skin on, you're going to find your stone skin wearing off very, very quickly, and if you're in golem form, you can't cast spells to defend yourself. So that is something you want to keep in mind. That even though this comes with a lot of magic resistance, which is great for tanking spellcasters, if you're fighting a lot of fighters, this is really something you want to avoid. Shape change in general is just always something you want to avoid. It's also one of the thing reasons I always say Tensor's transformation sucks, because you can't cast spells after using it. But the one time I would use Tensor's transformation for is the last shape change here, which is the Mind Flayer. Oh, uh, you do get the benefits of being a Mind Flayer, you do get the Psionic Blast ability, you do get 4 attacks per round, you also get 90% magic resistance. However, your Strength and Dexterity are reduced to 10, which means that, it, once again, if you're a pure mage, your Thacko is fucking garbage, making this spell useless. However, if you're a Thief Mage or a Fighter Mage, which is much better, you can then use this in combination, well, I guess, 
Yes, and a regular mage can use this in combination with Tensor's Transformation too, to basically go on a rampage. What I would recommend using this with is casting a Contingency, or Chain Contingency, to give yourself Improved Taste, Tensor's Transformation, and probably Protection for Magical Weapons. And use that to set upon sight. Shape change into a Mind Flayer, walk into combat, see an enemy. Those three spells go up, and then you can use the Mind Flayer to basically kill everything around you in seconds. Because every time a Mind Flayer hits an enemy, their intellect is reduced by five. And that's really, really strong, because if any enemy's stat is reduced to zero, they die instantly. You can also use this with a Time Stop as well, which is probably what I'd end up using, but that means you're using a lot of level nine spells for this ability which, of course, would guarantee you to hit something. And the reason you have to use this is because the base thaco of a Mind Flayer is garbage. Even if you're a Fighter Mage, your base thaco is going to be fucking garbage. So unless you're comboing this with Time Stop or a Chain Contingency, it's really not all that great, to be honest. And even then, if you're using a Time Stop to kill enemies, you can use a Time Stop and use your weapons anyways. So I just I feel like this spell is pretty fucking underwhelming in the sense of how strong it is, but it is an extremely fun spell, an extremely cool spell. I would never take this on a sorcerer in a million years. But if you're a fighter mage, or you have multiple mages, and you just want to have some fun, this spell is absolutely great. It's super enjoyable. I've tried a lot of ways to make the Mind Flayer thing work. I think the Iron Golem works well with uh, Thieves, but that's really it. Definitely not with Fighters. And the others, I, I've got nothing when it comes to making those actually useful. So in terms of usefulness, I would say Mind Flayer at the top, Iron Golem next... Greater Wolf Wear than the others literally aren't even worth mentioning. It is a fun spell, however, like I said, so if you're looking for a fun spell in your run, take Shape Change. If you're looking for something strong, this is definitely a skip for sure. Alright, moving on to the C-tier spells now, boys. First C-tier spell is Absolute Immunity. <laughs> Hilarious. Abjuration spell, so transmuters can't use it. Duration of four rounds, quick cast time just like the others, and assuming you're not using mods, this makes you immune to plus five weapons and below for four rounds. Big fucking deal not only does this still not make you immune to melsvenute meteors or plus six weapons but it's a level nine spell protection from magical weapons is level six exact same cast and basically does the exact same thing at this point in the game there are no enemies using normal attacks literally zero enemies are using normal weapons or attacks so you don't need to use anything except for protection from magical weapons and even if this is buffed with mods, I do know there are some mods out there that make this true immunity. It's still not as good as protection from magical weapons. I just, I don't understand this spell. I really don't. I thought it was so fucking cool when I was playing the original Baldur's Gate 2. And as you guys know, if you played the original, it has that really cool field of magical electricity and energy floating around you. And I'm like, wow, that looks badass. I can't wait for that spell. And then you find out you can hit through it with Melt's Minute Meteors. And you're like, damn, that spell's not nearly as fucking cool as I thought it was. This is, spell is hot garbage. I would put it at RP tier if I could, but there are some times when you don't have enough protection for magical weapons, and there are some times where you just absolutely need to keep your front line alive, assuming you're using a fighter mage or a thief mage, and you might end up using this spell, but honestly, it's garbage. There are actually a lot of enemies that strike with a plus six weapon, which hit through this in the base game. And again, Melt's new meteors go through it. I think Harm might actually go through it too, although I'd have to check that. I don't believe Harm strikes as a normal weapon because you're not, even though you're using your fist to hit somebody, I'd have to double check on that. I think that goes through this. Either way, the spell blows. You really should never take it or use it unless you have absolutely nothing else. Up next is Big B's Crushing Hand. This is an evocation spell, so enchanters can't use it. Decent range of 35 feet, and by decent I mean garbage. It lasts for three rounds. Stupidly long cast time of nine will target one creature. This spell is hilarious. Not only is it worse than the level 8 version, because at least the level 8 version would actually stun for one round, just like Implosion does in the beginning with no save, which is nice. This they actually get the save versus that. The first round it does 2d10 damage. 2d10. And then they have to save, and if they don't save, it does 3d10 and then 4d10. If we add all of this up, this spell, upon failing your save three times, excuse me, I believe it's actually twice, on failing your save twice, this spell does 9d10 damage. Wow. To one target, assuming they fail their save. Big fucking whoop, dude. One skull trap will not only hit that target, but hit all the enemies around it, whether or not they fail their save, for more damage. 
It's absolutely insanely ludicrous how garbage this spell is. I don't get it. I seriously don't get it. And the whole point of this spell, I suppose, is to keep stunning them. But enemies in this game have good saves. They have very good saves. Even at the end of Baldur's Gate 1, you're going to start encountering enemies who just seem to never fail their save. And you can argue, well, if you combine it with Malson and Doom, then they have to save it like negative 10, dude. Who fucking cares? This spell is hot garbage. This spell is hot garbage whether you're a fighter mage, a thief mage, a pure mage, a cleric mage, a fucking dump. I, don't, I, I can't think of any time you'd ever use this spell unless you literally had no other level 9 spells. If you have a good use for this, dude, let me know and hit me up, man. Because I, I'm, I'm at a complete fucking loss. The spell will get blocked by spell trap. The spell will get blocked by all sorts of shit. And <laughs> such crap, dude. I don't I don't understand why the Bigby spells are such fucking garbage. Like, especially again at level nine. Like a absolute immunity and Bigby's hands are probably two of the most underwhelming spells of all time. And I say that, and you know, we got some more underwhelming spells coming out in just a second, so maybe I should hold my tongue here. Up next is Energy Drain, Necromancy spell, so Illusionist can't use it. Touch spell, very quick cast time at three. And it will drain two levels of experience from the target. whoop de fucking do we'll Lose spell levels, hit dice, hit points, and abilities permanently. Can only be restored by a priest restoration spell. Honestly, I should have moved this into RP tier. I don't know why I didn't. This spell is definitely roleplay tier for sure. Even if you socketed Edwin's entire fucking spell book with energy drain, you couldn't actually use it to kill anybody. Um, not to mention you have to get into melee and touch somebody with it. And we all know how many fucking problems there are with that shit. And, like I said, I, I mean, even attacking a regular mob and using nothing but energy drain on it. Uh, I just, I don't understand this spell. I really don't. I really fucking don't. Considering especially the fact that the Black Blade of Disaster, on every single swing, has a chance to drain four levels. And then this spell, you can only use once per round, and it will drain two. I mean, I just, I don't fucking get it. I really don't. Like you said, unless you're just role-playing, there's really no reason to use this spell. I really should have moved it down to role-play tier. I don't know why I didn't. I wasn't... I clearly was not thinking on that. This spell sucks. Please don't take this. Even if you had every mage in your party using this spell, I don't know if you could actually kill anybody with it. I think Amelison's at, like, level 35, 35. Irenicus is at 35. Kangax is at 37. Um, even the dragons are in the mid-20s, upper 20s. Planetars are 25. I, I, I don't see how you could use this on anything. Like, really anything. Unless you're just bored running around town and want to, like, you know, energy drain some poor peasant or something, then, yeah, go for it. But aside from that, the spell blows. Up next is Gate Conjuration Summoning, so Diviners can't use this. This one actually has a very decent duration of 33 rounds, super long cast time as always, and will summon in a Pit Fiend. So, unlike the Tanari, which actually has useful abilities, or the Glabrezu, which actually has a lot of useful offensive uh, spells, the Pit Fiend is kind of in the middle. Uh, the Pit Fiend actually has a couple of attacks per round that hits moderately hard i think it's 3d4 maybe um something like that but um it comes in hasted it will uh cast fireball at well i believe and i think it will do a remove magic as well no i'm not sure on that i don't remember the pit fiends in my game doing that but i think the Baldur's gate wiki said they did but then again the Baldur's gate wiki has been wrong before so what the hell do i know plus everyone's mods are different too so it's hard to say uh long story short though this thing sucks just like all the other demons um, if you're looking for something to add some offensive power, then a Tenari or a Glabrazer are going to be more use. Uh, the Pit Fiend is probably the most lackluster of the demons, just because it's, again, a level 9 spell, competing with Time Stop, Contingency, Imprisonment, and Wish, which sucks. And then, again, it doesn't really have the cool, useful uh, stuns that the, the Tenari has, or the just the massive constant chain lightnings, or super tankiness of the Glabrazer. Now, Pit Fiends with uh, mods will be very tanky HP-wise, but aside from their fireball, which, if I remember right, does hit really fucking hard, there's really nothing going for in the spell. Not to mention, again, it will attack your party, uh, depending on what aversion you're running, because protection from evil is bugged and stupid. It will attack neutral people, and uh, I don't believe it gives XP either, because it's not technically part of your party. Um, so if you summon up a demon, and it kills, um, you know, some boss or something, all that XP is wasted because you don't get it. And like I said, the spell is just... Unless you're playing a game like Grand Theft Auto style where you just want to destroy and kill as many people as possible in the middle of the city, then Gate is great. If that's what you want to do, Gate is great. But if you're trying to actually, you know, do anything else or be remotely effective in combat, skip this and take something else instead. It's, it's pretty underwhelming, to be honest. Up next is Meteor Swarm, which is probably 
even more underwhelming than gate if that's possible evocation spell so excuse me can't think for a second enchanters can't use it and this will do 40 10 points of damage with no saving throw of fire damage in a 30 foot radius for four rounds so basically what this spell does is it does less than incendiary cloud which is level eight um which also does fire and it doesn't last as long and it has a longer cast time i don't understand why this spell is literally weaker than a spell right before it doing the exact same kind of damage lasting not as long and doing i i, I just don't understand i don't understand why this spell does this if it ignored mr that would make this spell useful, but it doesn't. It's blocked by magic resistance. It's blocked by fire resistance. What the fuck is the point of a level 9 spell that is worse in every way compared to a level 8 spell? Not to mention, you can contingency incendiary cloud. You can't do that with meteor swarm. If you're looking for an AoE spell, you should be using horde wilting, incendiary cloud, maybe a cloud kill if you're looking for poison, or a death fog for acid. Meteor Swarm is not one you want to do. This is in the same tier as fucking Ice Storm from level 4. Its damage is lackluster. It's underwhelming as hell. And again, especially considering it's a level 9 spell, this is just not something you want to take and use really ever, dudes. And up next, and finally for level 9 spells, a spell that's even more underwhelming, Whale of the Banshee. Necromancy spell, so Illusionist cannot use it. Cast time a 9, super long cast time. 30 foot radius, saving throw negates. Anyone who fails their save dies instantly. Does nothing to undead, just like before. Also does nothing to anyone who's immune to insta-death effects. Also does nothing to anyone who has death ward up, etc, etc. You get the picture. No penalty to save. This spell is fucking worthless. Oh, it doesn't ignore MR either. This spell is also blocked by MR. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And, you know, when you're, like, level 10... And you fucking open up, you know, the Lich's sarcophagus and he jumps out and uses this spell. You're like, wow, this spell is insanely powerful. He just killed my entire front line. Great. But when you finally get this spell, you're at the end of SOA. You're at the beginning of TOB. And in that, at that point, no enemy is going to die to this. No enemy is going to fucking die to this. Nobody has saves this shitty that they will fail and fucking die to the spell. Even with Malison and Doom up, dude. This spell just does not do its fucking job. And again, when you compare it to Time Stop, Wish, all the other nasty, amazing spells you get in this tier, this spell is just absolute hot garbage, dude. Can't say enough bad things about it. Don't take this unless you're role-playing, boys. Alright, and that will do it all for our level 9 mage spells. So before we finish here, I do want to go and talk about one more thing, and that is Wild Magic, which we haven't had a chance to do yet. Um, so let's go and do that. So wild magic is really interesting. Not only does every single time you cast a spell, you have a 5% chance to roll on the wild search table, but you also get a couple spells that are unique to the wild mage. Let's go and talk about those. All right. I was thinking if I wanted to do these out of order, but I don't. So Nawal's Reckless Dream Over. It's an invocation, evocation spell, which is strange because the only people who can get this spell is a wild mage. So what this spell does is it basically guarantees that this spell is a wild surge this is not in the sense that you will roll on the wild surge table i guess i should explain that first so the wild surge table is basically a table of a hundred different effects based on a roll if you roll a one then say you might summon a squirrel if you roll a 27 then it might do a lightning bolt instead if you roll a 69 you might be petrified the effects are the exact same every time every time you roll a 69 on the wild surge table it's going to petrify the caster every time you roll a 92 on the wild surge table it's going to summon a fireball instead so that's something to keep in mind first if you want to look at the wild surge table go to the Baldur's gate wiki it's listed there and every time you cast Nawal's Reckless Dreamer, you're going to be rolling on the Wild Search table, 100%. So, you're going to roll on the table. Let's say you roll a 77, and you're going to match that against the second number. The second number is based on the level of the Wild Mage, plus any modifier from casting a spell. Because every time a Wild Mage casts a spell, their spell level is modified. You see in the, uh, the text at the bottom, uh, Wild Mage spell level increased by 4, decreased by 3. So you take Wild Mage's level, plus that number plus chaos shield if they're using that and plus improved chaos shield if they're using that and now you have your second number i know this is confusing as shit and i'm sorry for that so that second number that is the wild mage's total and the other number is the roll in the wild search you just rolled in the wild search if the wild mage's total is greater or equal to the number on the wild search table 
the spell will go off as normal. If the roll on the wild surge table is higher than the wild mage total, the spell will do at that number on the wild surge table whatever that number is equal to. So like I said, if it's uh, you roll a 69 and you're a level 1 mage with no fucking chaos shield or anything, you'll petrify yourself and you basically just killed yourself instantly. Or if you're using Nira, you just killed Nira. That sounds super fucking confusing and I apologize for that. I really can't think of a better way to explain it other than comparing the role of the Wild Surge, comparing the role of the total Wild Mage level. Which, like I said, stacks with Chaos Shield and Improved Chaos Shield, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So, let's talk about Nala's Reckless Three Elmer. And again, I'm so sorry that sounds so fucking weird and stupid and confusing. I really don't know of a better way to explain it. So, this spell will allow you to cast any spell in your spellbook with Aura Cleansing. So, for example, if I'm Nira, I throw a Fireball and cast Nala's Reckless Three Elmer. Instead of having to wait for the next fucking round before I can cast this spell... It cleanses my aura and starts casting the spell instantly. And you can use this to cast any spell in your spellbook. If you're a level 1 wizard with Reckless Dreomer and somehow you got your hands on a time stop scroll, you can use Nawal's Reckless Dreomer to cast time stop at level 1. That is very, very powerful. You can use this spell to cast literally any spell you have in your spellbook, even if it's not memorized, even if you can't even use that spell yet. However, like I said, because you're rolling on the wild surge table and comparing it to the mage total level, it's very likely that this spell just ends up getting you or your party killed. That's what happens most of the time. However, there are other spells in the game, and of course, that later and later, the more levels you get, the less likely and likely that will happen, to the point where in Baldur's Gate 1, wild mage, generally going to die. In TOB, you can basically spam Novel's Reckless Dreomer to cast your whole spellbook at will. You can combo this to use fucking multiple time stops, multiple wishes, and you can then cast wishes and time stops on top of it from level 9 as well. So this spell is insanely handy. And again, if you combine this with Robe of Vecna, Emulate of Power, because this has built-in aura cleansing, it's like having permanent improved alacrity on your wizard. And you can use this spell over and over and over and over again to just machine gun out some of the best spells in the game without actually memorizing or using them. And that is insanely powerful. That being said, because you are rolling the dice every time, if you're a low level, or even if you're a high level, you just might get unlucky and get hit with some super nasty fucking wild surge. There's literally a hundred of them. There's literally a hundred bad or good things that can happen on the wild surge table. You might petrify yourself. You might cast a fireball on yourself. You might change the sex of yourself. You might cast a silence on yourself. I've actually lost my wild mages all through wild surges. Uh, one of them actually got almost to TOB. We had to use a reckless Viomer. We got a bad surge. And my character ended up getting hit with bugs. And which, of course, will basically guarantee you can't cast anything. And he ended up getting destroyed because you can't throw protection for magical weapons if you have bugs eating your ass. So this spell is extremely dangerous at low levels, but fairly consistent at high levels because of the other spells, which we'll talk about in just a second. Chaos Shield and Improved Chaos Shield. We'll talk about Chaos Shield first and talk about what it does. This, again, all three of these spells, Wild Mage only. You literally cannot get them on any other mage. So Chaos Shield will last five rounds plus one turn per five levels. And it will add 15 to the mage's total roll. That's literally all it does. Adds 15 to the total roll. Improved Chaos Shield will add 25 to the total roll. And this stacks with Chaos Shield. Improved Chaos Shield, I think, lasts longer. Yeah, flat two hours. So you're adding 25 plus 15, plus your wizard's level. So if you're a level 30 wild mage, 30 plus 40 is 70. If you roll on the wild surge table a 70 or less, your spell goes off as normal. And that's why wild magic is so powerful late TOB, because more often than not, this is going to work just fine. And you're going to get whatever spell off that you want to cast. And like I said, because you can cast any spell in your spell book instantly... With Aura Cleansing, you could just machine gun out Horde Wilting after Horde Wilting. Drop like literally 10, G 10 Gin with Wishes. Because you can cast Regular Wish on top of it. And so there's just all sorts of things you can do with this spell. That's really, 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 really powerful. And really, really fun to play with. Like I said before, RNG when it comes to competitive games is fucking a horrible idea. RNG when it comes to anything that's non-competitive is stupidly fun. I recommend Wild Ma Magic... Uh, excuse me. 
I recommend Wild Mages to everybody who's even remotely familiar with this game just because it's so fucking fun to play with. And like I said, extremely late, this shit is powerful as hell. Extremely fucking powerful. And again, I'm so sorry that I cannot explain this a better way. I'm sure there's a dozen people out there scratching their heads. What the fuck is he talking about? You're an idiot. You're not explaining this right. And again, I'm sorry about that. I'm really, really sorry about that. I wish there was a better way to explain it. I'll try one more time. Every time you cast Reckless Ryomer, you roll a number. If that number is less than or equal to the Wild Mage's level, plus Chaos Shield, plus Improved Chaos Shield, the spell will go off as normal. If that number on the Wild Search table is higher than the Wild Mage's total level, that spell will do a Wild Surge based on the number that was rolled. And again, I'm sorry I can't explain it any better way than that, guys. But thank you so much for watching, lads. This is going to finish our uh, level, uh, excuse me, our spell guide series for mages. We will be doing HLAs in a later video. And we're probably going to do multiple classes HLAs at once just because HLAs are very short. There really aren't too many to talk about for each class. So we might combine that into one video. I haven't decided yet. But thank you so much, guys, for watching. I really appreciate it. TX, relax, shut up. You're going to be fine. Thank you again so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Much love and God bless to every single one of you dudes. If you think I'm full of shit, let me know in the comments. Tell me what your favorite level 9 spell is. Tell me that you agree with me. Tell, tell me that you think I'm a fucking dumbass. Really appreciate you watching, guys, and enjoying this video. Thank you so much. Feel free to like, follow, subscribe. Generic sellout bullshit here. And if you ever want to watch me stream the game live, my Twitch stream is linked down there. I also have every single spell in ordered in timestamps, so if you're curious about a particular spell... Click that shit. Thank you so much again for watching, lads. Much love and God bless you dudes. We'll see you next time.